Hi, my name is David um, from the First Negative. And according to Derek, he said uh, uh, people are being, minors are being put to risk uh, for smoking. And he says it's 99% uh, of them are being put to uh, risk of smoking because they're able to buy it from other people. And he also said that the CDC reported that 38,000 uh, people under 18 are getting them, and 21,000 of them are becoming daily smokers. But what he didn't mention that that number of teens and uh, young adults is minuscule to what the current uh, young adults is in the United States. According to Info, please, uh, there's from 10 to 14 years old, there's 20 million um, young teens, and from 15 to 19, there's another 20, approximately 20 million. And um, combining them together is 40 million. So if we raise the national age for tobacco consumption to 21, um, comparing his stats with my stats, it's just a minuscule. Um, And then he also said that um, people at 21, if you raise it, they're gonna decide not to give it to uh, to young younger people. Um, but where where are the stats? He just there's no stats to back it up. He's just saying that they're they're more mature, and um, he doesn't have no nothing to back it up to see if they are mature and their brain developed at that age. But they have not introduced no no evidence for that. Um, uh, what he didn't mention is that tobacco companies are trying to combat this for uh, young adults. Uh, first, uh, you, the youth are not targeted by tobacco companies. According to uh, R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company by their advertisement and promotion uh, administration, uh, this is what it says, the master settlement agreement that R.J. Reynolds and other cigarette manufacturers signed in November 1998 set forth numerous tobacco marketing restrictions. In addition to those restrictions, R.J. Reynolds continued to follow several rules as stated in the voluntary cigarette advertising and promotion regarding, regarding cigarette advertising. Uh, one of these rules is no one depicted in cigarette advertising should be or appear to be under 25 years of age. So, um, and uh, again, R.J. Reynolds, um, they only target their selected market. They don't target younger adults. Um, so they're helping with that. Um, they say for, for publications where audience measurements data are available, only for readership to 18 and older, the company advertises only at the medium of age of audience is 23 or older. So basically, it's only for them to read because they um, advertisements on TV and radio have been banned since 1997 because of this, because of uh, younger teens and younger adults are were able to get and were influenced by these advertisements to smoke and so the companies they were restricted from that and now they're helping with that um, and he says that the current system allows to uh, access cigarettes easier so as I mentioned in 1997 um, tobacco companies have been restricted to to advertise on TV and on on the radio, so it's only to magazines and newspapers and, and such. Um, and the system is not flawed. Uh, again, uh, uh, according to the CDC, which is the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, in 2014, nearly 25 of every 100 high school students is 25 percent, and nearly 8 out of 100 middle school students use some type of tobacco. Product. This is 2014. In 2013, nearly half of high school students and nearly 18 of 
every hundred middle school students said they had never tried the Marco product. So that means 50% did. And comparing 2014 to 2013, we see a, a almost 25% reduction in their consumption. Um, another uh, system that discourages uh, adolescents from smoking, um, it's the FDA has, which is, uh, has a Center for Tobacco Products Overview. Um, the FDA Center for to Tobacco Products is responsible for carrying out the Family Smoking Prevention and Tobacco Control Act, which Congress passed in 2009. This law, commonly called the Tobacco Control Act, gives us broad authority to regulate the manufacturing, distribution, and marketing for tobacco products. So there's many, many, many things that are trying to prevent youth from smoking. Um, and the problem is with the people who are consuming it right now. Um, as Derek had mentioned, he said that 21 year olds are more aware that they shouldn't give it to them, but there's no stats to back it up. And if raising it to 21 will make more people criminals he didn't mention that. That's something he didn't mention. 18-year-old, 19-year-old, and 20-year-old will become criminals if they're caught smoking. Um, this does not tackle that buying tobacco is illegal, but only consuming it is illegal. And that's something he didn't he didn't attack, and he didn't present no solvency for this. Um, another thing he didn't mention is he's taking away 18-year-olds' uh, um, um, laws, I mean, rights. Um, some of the rights which are under the Constitution underline as the right to privacy. And this right to privacy was um, was underlined in a court case called Berthold versus Connecticut under the first, third, fourth, fifth, ninth, and fourteenth amendment. The right to privacy basically says, uh, it's not mentioned in the Constitution, but the Supreme Court has said that several of the amendments create this right. And what is this right? Our freedom to make certain decisions of our bodies and our private lives without interference from the government, which includes the public schools. Um, so they're taking away this right from 18 year olds, 19 year olds to choose to smoke. And this is a fundamental right that the Supreme Court has ruled and I'll be done with that.